Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. My name is Elisa and I'm so glad you're joining us for online worship. We're going to be singing and hearing a message from Pastor James. Let's sing together.
Father, we just come before you today, God. And we put our trust in you today, Lord. We sing our praises to you, Lord, again, Lord. God, we thank you for your presence, Lord, leading us, God, wherever we are today, Lord. Wherever we are gathered, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are there. We pray, God, that you would just speak to us, God, today. Show us your glory today, Lord. It's through your Son we pray. Amen. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Here at Christ Church, we do that through a three-step process of experiencing God's love, developing relationships, and reviving the world through service. I'm going to highlight some announcements for you today. Church, I need you excited. On October 25th, we are launching a 10 a.m. in-person service. We'll still be offering online worship and 9 a.m. worship, but this 10 a.m. service is going to be in our modern worship space. Get excited, pray with us, celebrate with us, and I don't know, just be excited with me. For Develop, I need you to gather your small group, gather your family, gather your crush, your neighbor, whoever, and come host a trunk for us. We are hosting our community and our neighbors and our families for Trunk or Treat on Halloween from five to six. Come give out candy and toys and prizes and let's just have a good time together. For Revive, we are collecting Christmas for Haiti bags. These bags support RTS missions and their continued ministry in Haiti. Everything's due by October 25th. And finally, church, I wanna invite you to give. You can give online or by the mail. Thank you as always for your generosity. Let's continue to sing. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our I went into ministry, I had the opportunity to help lead a widget company and uh, guide them in doing as well as they could. My job was mainly to look at the inventory and then set the price of our products uh, depending on what our competitors were doing. And so my strategy was that I was going to set a high price at first so that our production could begin to get going and we could build up our inventory. And then once we had a really good inventory, then I cut our prices down, kind of undercut the competition, and we made a lot of money by uh, selling in volume. And then once we kind of got rid of that inventory, then again, I put the price back up and started to build up my inventory again. And that was just kind of my strategy and cycle is I just put it up and down depending on how much we had to go out. And by the time we were done, uh, we actually had made that company into a multi-million dollar company. And, and actually later, I actually had my name um, published in the Wall Street Journal, uh, which for those older, you understand what that is. Younger people, this is an important newspaper back in the day uh, in the business world. And so I had my name in there as one of the, the great business young minds in our country. And I'm sharing a little bit of my credentials of, in business because I have a poll question for you this week. And I want to ask you, would you trust me to run your business? 
Okay, would you trust me to run your business and try and help you to do well? So like if you have a CFO position available, a chief financial officer, would you be willing to have me in that position? And so just in the comments section, you can put yes or no. Uh, you can say, yeah, I think you'd do okay. I could trust you doing those things. You still have a, a good business mind, I would guess. I'd, I'd put my money on that. Or you can say no. Maybe you like your CFO and you don't want me there. Maybe you have someone that's better and, and so you don't want me. That's okay. It, it's all right. It's just a... a easy question. Would you trust me uh, to run your business? And as you're doing that, as you're putting in those comments, that those yes or no, I probably should let you know that this company was not a real company that I was running. This was actually a company in my economics class in college. Uh, it was a software program where students or groups, I did my own company, uh, would put in their, their information and set their prices and all those kind of things, and then it would run the program and it would tell you how each business uh, did compared to the others and competing with one another. And I was the top uh, winner in our class. I had the best business and um, that didn't necessarily lead me to the Wall Street Journal, but I did get my name put in the Wall Street Journal uh, as the top business student at Iowa Wesleyan College. And actually I, I brought my uh, paperweight that commemorates me being put in there. So uh, I have proof that I was in there uh, to show you. So I, I do, I've enjoyed having a business mind and, and thinking through those things. I've told you probably many times if you listen to me uh, share that uh, I would be an accountant if I was not a pastor. And so I love working with numbers and, and looking at those things. And our topic today is kind of numbers. It is the economy. Uh, that's our topic we're going to look at today as we continue our series uh, of Jesus 2020. A recent Pew Research uh, poll said that the number one issue in the election this year is the economy. Uh, I'm not sure if that's totally true, but that's what the, the research said was that's the number one thing that people are concerned with. That's what is going to help them decide who to vote for is what are their opinions, what are their strategies and philosophies toward the economy. And it said earlier in the race that one of the main pieces of economy was trade and it was growing the middle class. But more recently now, the economy questions are all about how do we recover from the pandemic? And so there are questions that are important like um, unemployment. How do you treat people that are unemployed? Uh, how do you help small businesses either get back to running or, or keep them running at this time? What do you do with loan forgiveness? And, and what about uh, ways that you, you care for people with the stimulus packages? They've been talking about that this week, uh, about trying to do another stimulus package. And again, there's different philosophies on that. Some people would say just give that stimulus money to the American people and let them spend their money. That'll help keep the economy going. Other people would say, well, give that money to businesses because so many businesses are struggling uh, with the pandemic. And so if we keep them going, they'll keep people employed and, and keep the economy going. All kinds of complexity, all kinds of strategies and philosophies that make our economy move and, and go forward. And, and this just shows how big of an issue this is, how difficult it is to fully understand all the things that go on with our economy. And yet, it is an important thing for us to think about, pray about, and to work through as we think about uh, the election for this year. Uh, we need to talk about economy and, and how uh, our resources are used and what they go towards in the world around us. And so I want to encourage us to be thinking about that this week. And, and to help us look a little bit at economy, uh, I wanted to look at just a short passage in the scriptures in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, just a short passage of something that happened in Jesus' life and where he saw a lesson. And so I want to read to you from Luke 21, just the first four verses. It says, As he looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. I tell you the truth, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. This is the word of God for us this morning. In this short passage, we have an amazing lesson that Jesus is trying to teach. Uh, this passage takes place in the temple court. So Jesus and his disciples are in Jerusalem, and there's the temple, and then there's a courtyard that is around the temple. And, and in that courtyard, there are 13 places to place an offering. 
uh, 13 containers that would hold offerings that are given. And those offerings are put into, they call it a trumpet, uh, but it's kind of a container that's shaped kind of like a large chemistry beaker is what I think, because it's kind of big at the bottom, then it has a narrow neck and then kind of opens up at the top. And so uh, 13 of these trumpets are placed around the temple court, and then people would go and they would put their offerings into that. And the offerings that would go in would go to help with uh, temple expenses, like caring for the, the families and the workers uh, of the people in the temple. Temple. Uh, it would go to help buy supplies for the sacrificial offerings that would take place at the temple. And they would also go to help care for the poor and the needy as well. And so people would just come and they would put those offerings in. And, and on this day, Jesus is there with the disciples and he's noticing people putting in their offerings uh, into those trumpets. Uh, and he notices first uh, the rich people. So probably with large bags of, of money that they're going to pour in there, many coins that they're going to put into those trumpets. Uh, I imagine them taking quite a while to make their offering um, because it takes a while probably to dump in those gifts and to hear all that clanging coins uh, going in there. And they probably liked that sound uh, of all that money going in, but they probably also liked the attention it would get. You know, as that continuous clanging would happen, I'm sure people walking through the court would have to glance over and see who is this person putting in such a generous offering. And so they liked that attention and they, they made their gifts in front of others. But then Jesus noticed someone else, probably someone that others weren't noticing, a poor widow. And I imagine her going up to a trumpet to make her offering. And I see her pause. Uh, she pauses there with two copper coins, um, the, the least uh, currency that they had in those times. And I see her pausing, maybe to pray over her gift, but also I wonder if maybe she's still deciding, what do I give as she stands at that place for an offering? And then she puts in the, the two coins. And probably by the time they made their clank noise, not a noticeable noise like the rich noise was making, one as soon as it hit the bottom, probably if you wanted to see who had put in that offering, she was gone into the crowd, just disappeared. But in the midst of that, Jesus saw a lesson and he called his disciples' attention. And he said, look at those two kinds of gifts. And he says, the, the widow gave more than all the others. The widow gave more than all the others. And as I think of that lesson, and my mind, you know, works with numbers and, uh, you know, I, I understand them a bit. And when I look at two copper coins, I have two pennies here, uh, which are very similar, you know, the least amount there's not a lot less than these things. These are not more than most things. This is not more of an offering uh, than, than anything else. There's not much less than this other than one penny is less than two. That's the only thing that was worth less than what she put in was one coin. And yet Jesus looks at that small gift and he says it's more than what anyone else put in. Jesus sees more devotion in that gift, more sacrifice uh, he sees more grace and compassion in that gift than he sees in all the other gifts. And what that reminds me of as we think about our economy is it just reminds me that God's economy is different than our economy. God's economy is different than, than our economy because our economy to me makes sense. It's numbers, uh, that things are less, things are more, uh, they all go together well and, and it, it makes sense to me but when you say that something as small as two coins, two pennies, is more than what anyone else has given, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't compute in, in my numbers mind. And so I have to begin to work to shift my mind and, and open my mind to a new way to God's economy. And that's why I want to encourage us to be thinking about as we pray through uh, where to vote in, on the economy in this election is to open ourselves up to what God might teach us about what his economy really looks like. Because I think most of us, as we think of economy, uh, kind of the way I look at it most of the time is that I, I want to give less, I want to pay less, uh, give less, and um, the cost of things, I want to be less to go down, but I also want to get more, right? I want to have more jobs for our economy, uh, I want to have more opportunities, I want to have higher wages for people, and so most of us, our philosophy is that, you know, if you can help me to give less and I get more, then that's the economy I'm voting for, right? That's what I want to place my vote in, something that I can give less, but I can get more. And I think that's what most of us kind of think when we go and vote on the economy. Uh, it reminds me of back when I was younger, some votes that took place in Marion. I'm from Marion, Iowa. And in Marion, there are two uh, school districts. 
And this is just my memory of things. As a young person, I'm not sure it exactly happened this way, but this is what I remember. Uh, I remember hearing that there were, were votes taken in order to merge the two school districts. So there's Marion and there's Linmar uh, in Marion, and there were three votes taken to try and merge them into one school district. Now, at the time, I didn't think it was a great idea because I liked being at Marion, but a lot of my friends went to Linmar, and so I wouldn't have minded us being merged together. Uh, but they had three votes, and obviously they all voted no because uh, there's still those two school districts. But what I heard happened was that every time they went to vote, uh, they had to get a yes from each district. So it was a, a majority from each district had to say yes. And they never merged because they could never get two yeses. And what I heard was that the no's were always from the school district whose taxes would go up with the merger. So whoever's taxes, and I heard it was on both sides uh, at different times, but whoever's taxes went up, that district would vote no to merging. And as I heard that as a young person, all I thought was, well, they're voting on their pocketbook. They're voting based on the economy uh, for themselves. They're not looking at what's best for the kids, uh, what's best for the city, what's best for the schools. And maybe they were, because I'm sure there's lots of things that, that go into that. But what it looked like to me was they were just voting on what was best for their pocketbook, for their economy. And I think so many of us get caught doing that. When we look at the economy, we want to vote for where can I give less and get more? And I think Jesus wants to encourage us to think differently as we look at the economy to think about God's economy and how it's not just run by numbers like our worldly economy is, but that God's economy actually is, is worried more and concerned more uh, about grace and sacrifice. That's really God's economy is more about grace and sacrifice. And so it calls us to shift our mindset, set, to shift the way we look at our economy and the way we become involved in our economy around us. And so I wanna encourage us just to try to think differently uh, about the economy and not just about what it does for our pocketbook, but what it does for those who are in need, what it does for other people, how it helps them and assists them to grow in the kind of economy that we believe God would want us to have, uh, one that offers grace and, and sacrifice and generosity to one another. And so I want us to be thinking about that and looking at that uh, as we look at, at the issues around the economy around us. Uh, just a few places that I see, uh, and there's probably quite a few of them that we need some adjustments in our economy and how things work uh, around us. And it's not always just about meet, uh, making laws or, or doing those kind of things, but just places um, where justice and fairness need to come into play. Uh, one place that I've heard conversations around our country about is in fair wages. Uh, making sure that people have fair wages for the things that they do. And one place that it is not fair and doesn't come out as a, a fair thing that we would want in our economy is when um, men and women are not paid the same. And I've seen many different numbers on this uh, gender gap in wages, uh, lots of different numbers, different perspectives to look at it, but basically all the numbers say that women are not paid the same as men, not paid as much as men uh, for oftentimes the same amount of work. And some of the numbers that I found, and I, I'm feeling kind of visual 80 uh, today, so I hope that this helps a little bit because the numbers are great for me, but not everyone's a numbers person like me. And so I brought in some money to try and help us to see this. And so this is $100 in ones, okay? So that's how rich I am, $100 in ones. And with that, that gender gap, if that were there uh, in those wages, that a man would make all $100 if they, they did their job and they got this as their wage. But if a woman did the same thing, uh, they'd take 20% out, 20% less would be given to her, and so she would only get $80. And so that's not the way our economy should work. Shouldn't it work that for the same amount of work, the uh, person, no matter their gender, should get all of what they deserve for that work? And so that's just one place, and with, with that situation, you know, I don't believe that the government should just have a law that says everyone gets paid the same or anything like that. I think it's just something for us to keep in our mind that as we go about our work, as we uh, work in our businesses, as we hire people, as we pay people, uh, that we should be saying, let's make sure these things are fair and, and equitable for those that are, are giving of themselves uh, to those businesses. And so, again, we don't need a law for that, but we need to be aware of it and, and try and work to make adjustments so that we can work through that. Uh, so that's one place uh, across the nation, but I also was trying to look here closer to home at, at some of the economic issues around us 
And I have a website that I can go to uh, called Mission Insight that gives me some demographic information around us. And so uh, I put in our church location here at Pine and, and 41st Street and um, made a two and a half mile radius around our location. And it started to show me about the households that are around us, so our neighbors here around us. And I was looking at their household incomes, and the first thing that I noticed uh, in the numbers was that we have 12% of people in that radius around our church, uh, 12% live in poverty. 12% of the families around us uh, live in poverty. That's one out of eight. And that means that they don't have enough income to cover their living expenses. And, and the specific number for that, I was looking for that, is different because uh, it depends on the family. It depends on how many people are in the family, if the, how many adults are in the family. And so, but still, 12% uh, live in poverty. The, national, or the average in Iowa is 7%. And so we have a bit more concentration of people living in poverty right around us. One in eight families uh, are living in poverty in our neighborhoods. And I think that's something that's important for us to pay attention to and to notice um, that we can make some differences. We can make some changes uh, to change our economy, to care for people, and to help lift them up right here in our own neighborhood uh, if we look at our economy a little differently. And, and a more specific place that I, I see some adjustments that are needing uh, is a number that has haunted me ever since I have seen this number. And it was just when you divide the households by race uh, and ethnicity and you tell what their household median income is. And I have a graph for that. And so I hope that you can see on that that actually the Asian families are doing very well. They're at the top uh, of the list. And then there's kind of a middle group that is the white families, Hispanic and other. And they all uh, make around 52 to $54,000 a year. Uh, but then we have the black households. And you can see on the graph that, that their median income is just over $30,000. And that just shocks me when I, I saw that number. And, and I don't believe that this is the way that God would want our economy to work around us, right here in our own neighborhood. Uh, that people of black households uh, don't seem to have the same kind of opportunities. I, I wish we could look at it and say that everyone has the same opportunities, but it doesn't look like that when I look at these numbers. And so it shows just such a low uh, number for their median income. And median household income is not an average, but it's median. That means half the people make less than that, half of the families make more than that. And again, if, if we visually wanted to look at that, just comparing again, kind of that middle group, if it was a white, Hispanic, or other family, and, and they had brought home $100, um, a, a black family with those ratios would only bring back 56% of, of that. Now, so it's almost half that they would not take home to take care of their household, their family. And so to me, that's just uh, unacceptable that our economy creates a situation like this. And, and I'm sure there's people smarter than me that can kind of pinpoint what might need to change. I don't know exactly what, what needs to change, but I know something does. And I'm sure there's lots of different factors too, the economy, education, uh, career choices, all kinds of things. Um, but I know that, that this is not the way that God would want our, our economy to be. And so it challenges me and it encourages me uh, to, to look differently and to think what can we do to make this different in the future. I believe one of the great things that we can continue to do is, is to work with families in poverty. We still have our, our food pantry that we're serving others and then our, our uh, connection to Buchanan Elementary School, which is in that radius and where a lot of those families live. Uh, the more we can engage them and encourage the school to, to grow, that can help uh, all kinds of kids with their education and help them hopefully grow to, to better jobs and better paying jobs to lift those things up. Uh, but we need to be aware of it uh, in order to then know that changes need to happen. And I see that exactly as what Jesus is doing in this passage. See, Jesus was pointing out this widow that gave all she had to live on, that she gave out of her poverty uh, into the, the same offerings that others were giving. And, and I believe as she points her out and, and as he lifts up the widow, Jesus is also kind of trying to bring down to earth the rich and the disciples and saying, hey, you put in these great gifts, these larger gifts, but she just put in more than all of you have put in because she gave all to me and to my work. And so I don't think that God necessarily is calling us to all give all that we have, but I do believe that he's calling us to become more like the widow. I really think that's what God's economy is about, that, that Jesus uh, wants to make us more like the widow. He wants to make us like her that was willing uh, to lean in to what God had for her and, and to know and trust that God would care for her. 
and to know it was a, a gift of grace and of sacrifice that she offered. And so we can look at the economy not in a way that says, okay, I want to give less and get more, but say, I want to be in an economy that, that cares for people and, and that lifts all people up uh, to help us to move forward together. And, and what I really love, the example of this, this widow that Jesus wants us to be more like, uh, is that she put her offering into the temple treasury. Now, uh, I said earlier, the temple treasury went to help those that worked there. It helped with the sacrificial system, but it also took care of the poor and the needy. And so this was gonna, a gift was gonna come back and, and bless her. And partly as I would have been there, if I were Jesus, I would have gone, hey, hey, just keep your two copper coins. You don't need to put in anything given your situation, what's going on in your life. Let us just take care of you. Uh, you don't need to put in all that you have to live on. And, and in a sense, I believe that she had that opportunity. She didn't have to put anything in. And yet I think if someone would have said that, she said, well, I'm, I don't have to put this in. I, I want to. I want to give. I want to help other people. And so that's the kind of economy that God wants to invite us into, one that we will participate, we will step in, we will partner with one of us, not just about free handouts, it's about how do we partner with one another to work together for the good of all. And, and that's what this widow was a part of. She was giving what she could to help all the people around her to grow. And I believe God wants to call us, challenge us, to change our view on the economy if the way that we're looking at it is, you know, I want to give less and get more. I, I actually hear more and more people saying, I'm going to give more to get more. Uh, I've heard that said more often than I, I have in the past, and I hope that's a change because actually numerically that makes more sense because you shouldn't give less and get more, uh, but if you give more, you should get more. And so what if we can work on having an economy um, that leans more towards God's economy uh, of sacrifice and of grace uh, an economy that cares and lifts up one another so that we can all move forward together. Uh, I pray that God would help us uh, to move away from the world's economy, to recognize that our faith and uh, Jesus doesn't want me to become rich in the world's economy. He wants us to be rich in God's economy. He wants us to be rich in grace and sacrifice. And so we, may we lean more into uh, this attitude of the widow being willing to, to trust in God's care for us and also to participate in caring for those around us. Let us pray. Gracious God, I pray that you would help us uh, to be open to a, a new economy, to your economy, opposed to our own. So often with the numbers, Lord, we see um, things as we can give less and get more, uh, but you say that, that less can be more uh, when we trust in you that when we can give you everything, uh, you can take care of us and those around us. So may we trust in you. May we look for ways to engage our economy to help it grow so that we might care for all of your people. Continue to challenge us, uh, continue to encourage us, and help us grow in God's economy. I pray these things in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen.